internet. Hello, feminist. Uh, so I just got this um, email from somebody that I don't know. I sent to my private email and to like a group uh, work email, um, basically outlining that they had made a video response or like annotation to one of the posts that I'd made on um, uh, feminism and what feminism means to me and basically saying like looking forward to your responses. And thank you for your response by the way, I do appreciate it. To some of the questions that they'd posed. I got about five minutes in and I, I had to turn the video off because it was just like really... Different to your opinion? Tedious and tiring. And, and it's not like you've ever expected anyone to listen to your opinion on the internet. I would like to talk about... 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 <clears throat> a little bit overwhelming because it's filled with the same sort of rhetoric that we hear or I feel like I hear all the time about feminism and why feminist issues aren't important. I never said feminist issues aren't important. I kind of forgot to. And that, you know, they're being, you know, it's coming from a privileged position. I never said anything about a privileged position either. Were you watching the right video? And then all of those things and... Well, I acknowledge like some of the things that I talk about are not relevant to people across the globe. They're definitely relevant in terms of feminism and gender equality in the context in which I experience them. Um, I guess this video is essentially uh, aimed at saying or addressing a couple of the, the questions that this person posed. I, as I said, I only listened to about five minutes of it because it was so difficult to stomach. It's not like I bullied or abused you. All I did was scrutinise and challenge some of your opinions, you girly bum. So in this video, I outlined that at the time that I made the video, there was only, you know, one female representative in the, the federal ministry for the Abbott government. Now there are two. So female representation in the cabinet has doubled. Go feminism! Um, and essentially this person's gone and said that, well, you know, there were said number of candidates, uh, you know, about a third or less of them were women. Like, it's not about women being misrepresented because of gender inequality or because of, of issues that, you know, pertain to feminism, but because of personal choice and, and you know, 50% of the population vote. And so women are also voting for men rather than female candidates. And like, this is just an example of some of the silly, silly things that this person has outlined. Whoa, 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 hang on a sec. So let me just get your logic right. Fact, 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 fact. This person is silly. Yeah, because, you know, it's all because of systemic oppression or something. And because it's about systemic oppression. <laughs> yeah, of course it is. <laughs> and it's about systemic uh, things that are in place. Oh, you're serious, aren't you? Just understand, I didn't want to have to do this. <laughs> See, when someone makes a positive claim, in this case you, they hold the burden of proof. It is up to you to prove that that claim is true. So if you have any integrity, you'll back your statements up with some proof. Good luck with your research. Might I suggest you start with the Australian Federal Government's Sex Discrimination Act of 1984, or the Victorian State Government's Equal Opportunity Act of 2010. That mean that women are socially conditioned in the same way that men are socially conditioned. Yeah, by our mothers, generally. To favour men over women. Yeah, Mum sure did love a bit of good old misogyny. Um, so the fact that there are less women candidates is not because women uh, choose, per se, to not partake in the process, but because the systems in place don't have the space for women to partake in the process. Parliament House is pretty roomy. Plus, I'm sure the seats will be big enough to accommodate the typical feminist, big, fat, disgusting ass. Or there are the, the, the system is constructed in a way that it's not conducive to women participating to the same rate as men participating. You still haven't read those acts of parliament that I suggested before, have you? And there is less access for women. So you say things like, um, it's personal choice and babies, but mostly personal choice. Mm -hmm. Like you'll find that the latest statistics from the ABS, the Australian Bureau of Statistics. Is that what ABS stands for? 
I thought it was African bum stick. Um, found that you know, eighty five percent of 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 men in a coupled relationship had full time employment, whereas uh, only what was it? Sixteen percent of women had full time employment when they had young dependent children, aged zero to four. Yeah, they were probably at home looking after their young dependent children aged zero to four which only rose to 44 percent when the children were 15 years or younger maybe still at home looking after their kids aged 15 years or younger compared to 85 percent that's because of traditional gender roles and social conditioning that reinforces traditional gender roles that means that women are the primary the, for the overwhelming part, the primary caregivers of children. And men were the primary stuff getters for those women and children. Yep, that sure is how our species evolved. In addition to that, those statistics are in relation to uh, full-time employment. In addition, only 13% of employers had flexible workplace agreements in plan. Workplace flexibility directly impacts people who are primary caregivers of children because they need to have flexible time to take care of children, to pick them up from school, to take them to school, to, you know, have leave and, 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 and capacity to look after their children when their children fall sick. Us feminists demand that women be treated exactly the same as men, except we get flexible work hours to pick the kids up, workplace quotas and career placement programs, we never get conscripted to go to war, and you can't punch us in the face when we're giving you the shits. So you talk about things like me misconstruing data or, or, or things, you know, about being choice and about being certain things, but really it's like, honestly, <laughs> <laughs> I don't even have it in myself to address half the things that you've spoken about because it's about systemic oppression. And just because women are also voting or articulating themselves in the same way doesn't actually mean that that theory is void or null. It means that women have been socially conditioned in the same way and you're the only one that can see it, hey. To promote gender inequality. Like, it's just, it's baffling and it's tiring. And, like, like the fact that someone can turn around and say that the, the things, some of the things that I've said come from a privileged position, which I acknowledge they do. I, I live in Australia. I live, you know, I grew up in a pseudo or semi-middle class family or, like, you know, whatever, like, not lower class. I don't know. I never said any of that. Is someone projecting? Doesn't mean that those issues aren't relevant or or important in the Australian context or even across the world. And doesn't mean that there aren't other forms of privilege that outweigh or, or counteract levels of privilege that are in place when I'm talking about certain issues. <sighs> <sighs> it's about perspective and, and coming from a, a, a place of male privilege it's very difficult hey i've only used male privilege once this week jeez you send one express post letter and suddenly you're a sexist bigot um or like very interesting to see how people experiencing certain levels of male privilege and and other types of privilege turn around and say to women feminism is not an issue and and you need to get some perspective like i just it's exhausting you know what really boils my bare piss about you talisha during our last chat you said this we shouldn't be valued more or less based on genitalia. See, unless we're talking about cold hard cash, value is a subjective thing. So when you say this, it shows that the, in the inner workings of your head, you see a housewife who, who stays home and looks after kids as, as being of a lesser value to someone who holds, say, a high level executive job or a, or a, a cabinet position. So all you're really doing is showing that you're an absolute misogynist. The only one oppressing women here, Talisha, is you. I don't even... <laughs> Talisha, you are somebody who works for a political party, you are outspoken on YouTube, and you write your opinions for a feminist magazine. You are somebody who should be able to back up your views and the things that you put out into the public. So I'm going to make this very easy for you. I'm going to give you six straightforward questions that I would like you to answer directly. They don't have to be long answers, but just coherent answers. Question number one. Can you please clarify what you meant in the last video by boys' linguistic representation is nine to one over female linguistic representation? 
Question number two. If male members of cabinet and male high level executives in the media should lose some of their privilege to make way for women, is it also fair that we reach gender parity in less glamorous industries, i.e. mining and construction? Question number three. Should we be aiming for overall gender parity in the Australian workforce, i.e. sack 600,000 men and force 600,000 women to work in their place? Question number four. Do you see discrimination against men as a lesser evil than discrimination against women? If not, how do you reconcile your description of feminism as true equality between the genders with your assertion that privilege should be taken from men and given to women based only on gender? Question number five. Should Australia adopt a more socialist or communist system of government focused on equality of outcome instead of equality of opportunity? And finally, question number six. You have asserted that a woman who holds an executive or ministerial position is of higher value than a woman who chooses not to build a career, but rather stay home and fulfill the role of primary caregiver for her children. What exactly is your method of, or formula for calculating a woman's value? Now you could choose not to answer these questions or make another response video skirting around the questions altogether. But they've got a word for for when someone has a belief and there's no evidence or doesn't match reality. Um... I look forward to hearing from you. On a feminazi. Oh. Maladies, maladies.